Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, my name is Dani and today I'm going to do part 3 of my 30 after 30. If you haven't watched part 1 and 2 yet, I'm going to link those in the description and part 1 here on the cards so you can check that out. But this is basically 30 books, authors, things that I want to read after I'm 30 because my 30th birthday is coming up. By the time that you're watching this video, it's like 2 weeks from now. So. That's why I'm doing this video. I, like I mentioned in the first one, I had the idea of like doing the 30 books to read before I'm 30, but I had that idea too late in the year. So I'm doing something different and it is 30 books or authors, like the first video that I want to read after I'm 30. So the first part was about authors, second part was about classics, and this part is more recent releases, more new books that are very hyped, uh, especially on booktube, or that I just hyped for myself for one reason, one reason or another. And I definitely do want to read them soon. I have 10 books in the list and I order them in the, in the order of the ones that I read, want to read the most to the one that I want to read the least, although they are all books that I really do want to read a lot. They are the 10, top 10 in the list. And I also have this time for the other videos, I had one honorable mention for each. This one, I have four honorable mentions because I wanted to make a list of 10 books that I don't own, so I have, still have to buy it, but I have four books that I really do want to read soon, and I do want to read like in the next few years or the next few months that I already own, so I have no excuse for not having read them yet. And the other videos, I left the honorable mentions to last, but in this one I'm going to start with them because you already know that I own these books if you have been watching my channel, and I just want to show you that I do, I am committed, I will read these books soon, I do, they are on my top list of books that I want to read. So the first one in my honorable mentions, the honorable mentions are not ordered in any way, let me order them, I can order them. This would be number one, this would be number three, four, and two, or maybe no, this one and two. I think one and two might be inter interchangeable. But okay, the fourth one in my honorable mentions would be The Puppy War by RF Kuang. This is a series that I just finished this year, if I'm not mistaken, and it's one that it's very hyped on booktube. Everyone, not everyone, but most people who love who read it love it. And I do think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. It's a fantasy inspired uh, by Asian culture. And it's very military focused, which intimidates me a little bit, but also I'm really, really curious to read it. So yes, I'm definitely going to read The Poppy War. It's on my list. <laughs> and then the third one on the list would be The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is not higher up on the list because we, know, we don't know if the series is ever going to be completed, but I'm so curious to read it. I just want to know what the hype is all about. I am a little bit worried that this is going to be too slow on the, or the not. A, I know that not a lot happens in the book. I'm prepared for that. But I hope that's still engaging for me, even if that's the case. I know his writing is very interesting and maybe flowery in a bit, in some bits, but I think being aware of all of that is going to set me up to really enjoy this book. So I really, really want to read it soon. Another epic fantasy. Four books on this on the honorable mentions are epic fantasies. So like I said, the first two, I there they would be interchangeable if it wasn't for one thing. So I put this in number two, but right now I really want to prioritize it because there's a TV show coming up. If it wasn't for that, it would definitely be number two. But that's uh, the Wheel of Time series, so The Eye of the World is the first one. There are 14 books in the series. Can I read them all before being spoiled by the TV show? That's questionable. That didn't work for me with Game of Thrones. I had to watch the TV show because I was not going to get caught up on the books. So I don't know what's going to happen with The Eye of the World, but I, if possible, I would love to read them before watching the show and before being spoiled by what happens in the show. I don't know much about the plot or the stories of this one. And the one that will be first on the, is first on the list is the one that I want to read the most, but I have a plan for it. And that's The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. 
This is a huge epic series of books. The plan is to have 10 books in the series. Uh, the fourth one just came out and I do want to read it and I do want to know what this is all about because apparently is the best Brendan Sanderson of all of his works. So I do want to read it, but we bought the special Kickstarter edition, the letterbound edition that's divided in two, and I'm planning on reading that one. So the really pretty edition. So I'm not going to read this copy, uh, and I'm just postponing <laughs> reading the series until we get the letterbound special edition. Again, I have not been spoiled by anything that it's in the plot or the magic system or anything in this book. All I know is that there are 10 orders because we had to pick one in the Kickstarter and I don't know what they're about at all. <laughs> so these are the honorable mentions and now let's go into the 10 books that I do not own that I want to read after I'm 30. So number 10 on this list is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a sci-fi about... I don't know what the plot is uh, actually, but I know there's a lot of different races and everyone says it's very heartwarming and it's just a nice book to read. At the same time, same with Name of the Wind, I don't think a lot happens in the story. So that's why it's a number 10. It's a little bit intimidating for me because it's... I usually like plot-driven stories more than character-driven, but this is one that I feel like I'm... It's just going to be a, a good pause from all the plot-driven books that I read. I just think I need to read it at the right time, but I do want to read it soon, at some point, after my birthday. Number nine is lower in this list exclusively because of the size of this book, and that's Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is another huge epic fantasy. It's like over 800 pages, and I haven't heard as many positive reviews as I have for The Way of Kings, for example. So I'm really comfortable getting into The Way of Kings because I've read Brandon Sanders, so I know his writing style is something that I really want to keep reading. And I've heard enough good reviews about it to know that I will really enjoy it. But with Priory of the Orange Tree, I've heard amazing reviews, but not as many. And a lot of people just feel okay about it, just like it okay. And I don't want to be the person who will like it okay. If I'm going to read an 800 page novel, I want to kind of be sure that I will really love it. Otherwise, I might just give up on it really soon. And I don't want that to happen because this seems like an amazing, amazing story. I don't know a lot of the plot. I know there are dragons because there's a dragon on the cover. I know this is one of the prettiest covers I've ever seen. And that's pretty much it. It was also one of the most hyped books when it came out on booktube, so very intimidating. Number eight on this list is Vicious by V. Schwab. This is a book that I think I'm absolutely going to love. It's a number eight on the list because there are others that I want to read <laughs> sooner maybe, but this is, uh, I don't know if it's an anti-hero story necessarily, but it's a, it's a story about two friends who, who are friends in college and then when the story is happening, they're enemies. And from, from what I know, they're very great characters. You don't know which one is supposed to... Like, they're not good characters. They are villains in the story in some sort of way. I know that there's uh, superpowers that people who experience near-death, ex who have near-death experiences, develop superpowers or something like that. <laughs> but I'm really, really curious to read it. Uh, but at the same time, the sequel, I know a lot of people either love it or hate it like they either really prefer the first one or really prefer the second one so i'm very curious but people seem to not be satisfied by the way that the sequel ended i think it's going to, there's going to be another book in the series but i don't know if that's completely confirmed or if how soon that's going to come out so i'm i would probably just take my time if i really like the first one i would want to read the second one but maybe just taking my time it's better than reading the whole thing and not being satisfied by the end of the second book. Number seven in the list is basically a series, but starting with the first one, I really want to read Every, Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. I listened to half of the audiobook of that and I was really enjoying it, but I was also not paying too much attention 
so I would need to go back and re-listen to a lot of it and I just didn't want to do that so I DNF that temporarily but I don't I do want to go back to it but I wanted to have the physical books they're very short and I love the premise so much the first book in the series uh, these children are go to this house where all the children who are there are, uh, have gone to magical lands and returned to normal life. So they're there to deal with that. But I think the other books in the series are the stories of these children actually in that land. And I don't know how I feel about that, but everyone seems to love it. So I want to know as well. I know the first one has a mystery, like a, a murder mystery side plot there, and it's in a very short book. Uh, I don't know how that how that's solved, but it's one that I really want to have and to read, and I think I'm going to really love it because the premise is something that I really enjoy. So, and I was really enjoying the audiobook. I just didn't want to reread it at that point, but now I do want to read the physical copies. Number six in the series is actually a graphic novel, not a novel. And that's Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This is the one graphic novel in my list of books that I really want to read uh, because I only heard amazing things about it. I, I really like the, the drawing, the, the illustration style and the whole series from what I've seen. I got it from my library once, but I, can't, I just can't read graphic novels on my phone. Uh, that would be just too annoying for me. So I really want to have the physical book, especially when it's illustrated, I think, for graphic novel illustrations and all that. I think it's much better to read it physically. So it's definitely one that I'm that I'm very curious about because apparently there's a lot of characters that I fall in love with and I just want to know what the hype is all about. Number five on the list is a book that was very hyped on booktube when it first came out and I think that all the hype has died down. No one talks about this anymore. I'm very curious to see in the end of the year where this is going to fall in people's uh, best of the year series, worst of the year videos, because I don't know, I have a feeling that it's maybe not going to be even mentioned by most people, but I still want to read it. And that's Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I've read all the Grisha trilogy by her and I really loved it. I read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I didn't really like it so much, so I don't know. I want to read her adult novel and see how I feel about it. It's Dark Academia, they're, they're, I think it's Yale. Uh, there's this secret society that they're in and there are ghosts, I think. I don't know a lot about it. Uh, I know it's a very weird story that, again, <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of plot from what I heard. Maybe there's a, there's a trend here in this list. But I, I'm curious about it because I really like her writing and her story in one of her series and not in the other one. So I want to know where this one would fall. Number four on the list is a book that was, was originally published in Spanish. And that's The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Afon. If you watched my other two videos in the series, you know that I have an issue with translations. And when the book was originally in a language that's not Portuguese or English, I don't really know in which language to read it, so I don't know if I want to read this book in the Portuguese translation or the English translation. If I read it soon, I will probably read it in the English translation because that's what I can find here, but I don't know which one would work better. Let me know if you've read it and what you think of the translation. It's usually easy to know when the translation is not done very well and I had a lot of issues with that in the past and that's why sometimes I, even if I really want to read a book I don't because I think it might be spoiled by the translation but this one is apparently uh, basically a love story for books and for reading and there's this boy who finds a book in a library I think and then he tries to find the author because the author disappeared or all the books disappeared or no one knows I don't know, there's a very, I mean, there's a mystery aspect to the story that I really don't remember uh, and I don't want to know a lot about it before reading, but that's one that I'm very curious to read. It's high on my list of books that I want to read. I just don't know which language to read it. Number three in my list is here only because of booktube hype and that's The Secret History by Donna Tartt. There are a lot of other books, like Ninth House a little bit, that 
is about societies like dark academia and societies in the university setting and some type of crime happens and they have to figure that out there are a lot of books like that and this premise sounds super interesting to me but i always feel like i should read that secret history before i read all these other ones that are newer than secret history so i do want to start with that one and i'm so curious to read it i hate the cover of the book so much i almost bought it once in portuguese but again i wanted i prefer to read it in english and the cover was so ugly anyway so i ended up not buying it but i was really i was really hoping that at some point there would be a better cover for this book because I don't know, I just really don't like it. Maybe I should just try the audiobook. Let me know if you read this book in the audiobook and if it's good. But I am really curious to, to, to see it. I don't know a lot about it. I avoided all spoilers again for this one. And I'm just so excited about it. When I finally read it, I think it, I'm going to have so much high expectations for it. That's probably not gon going to live up for it. But I, I, there, I can't help it. <laughs> The second book in the list of books that I want to read the most is here because I hyped it for myself. Uh, I don't know a lot of people who have read it, especially the whole series, because I read the first one in the series and I want to reread it and read the rest of the series. Uh, and I don't know a lot of people who read especially the whole series. I don't know, it's a little bit old already, but I feel like I'm going to love it. And that's Unwind by Neil Schusterman. I read the first book a long time ago uh, on my phone. I don't know why I was reading the book on my phone, but I read it and there's a specific scene on this book that impacted me so much that I had to put it away and not read it for like a few days because I was just processing what happened. And that's sometimes what happens with Neil Schusterman books, but that's the one that was most impactful for me. And his books are usually five stars for me. I love his writing. I just love everything the whole story that he, he creates around a, a specific aspect that you, at first you think it doesn't make sense but then when you get into the story it, it all develops in a beautiful way and I would definitely have to reread the first one because I don't remember I just remember the series and I want to read it again uh, I want to read the whole book first the whole book uh, and at the time when I read it I started to recommend it to a lot of my friends and give them gift to the gift them uh, the first book but I never continued the series because I loved the first one so much that I didn't think it could continue being that good. Like I, I think it would only get worse from there. And I didn't want to spoil the first book for myself. But now I do want to read the whole series just to see what happens. I feel like the first book is not going to be spoiled for me, even if the rest of the series doesn't live up to the the how good the first book was but yeah i didn't say what this is about unwind is a dystopia about situation where abortion is illegal and the parents have to decide until the, ch the child is 13 if they want to abort them or not so it'll be like they are called they call it unwind in the book and it's just a complete nonsense premise then say it, it really sounds like it would never work but it does and i really like the way that he goes about it again it's a premise that makes no sense but i really loved the execution of this book and now that it's been a long time i want to reread it and i do want to continue the series first book book number one in the list of books that i want to read the most and again i don't know why i haven't yet but I still need to buy it, uh, and that's Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. I watched the movie a long time ago, and I didn't remember much about it, but just recently, uh, my husband and I did a whole marathon of all the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies, and I fell in love with it all over again. It's just so much fun. I just loved it so much. It, it's just amazing. And I want to read the book. I want to read the, the material where it was all based. I know it's much more scientific than the book and I'm really excited about that. I think that sounds so fantastic and I again only heard amazing things about this book from people who also love the movie so I think it's just I have to read it. I have the second book in the series but I don't have the first one and I wanted to buy the first one in the same edition but apparently it doesn't exist anymore because I bought the second one second-handed uh, and the first one 
is out of print or something so i'm gonna have to get a different edition of it but definitely one that's top of my list uh, if you haven't heard about it it's about people who create a theme park that's all with dinosaurs because they clone dinosaurs and there's a lot of dinosaurs and it's just the movie is so good and i want to read the book and i want to read the book soon i hope hopefully very very soon and that concludes my series of 30 after 30 which is more than 30 books because i have a lot of honorable mentions in all of these videos but let me know if you've read any of the ones that i mentioned here or which ones you would recommend for me to start or which ones you recommend to, to add to this list considering the ones that i'm interested in reading and again if you haven't watched the other videos in the series sure be sure to check them out and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for joining me bye